Oh, it is against my name. I have leader Susie. All right here, we shall be talking. But to me, uh, because uh, March is done, we're getting into uh, okay. only five days. We're getting to the uh, to April. April has a lot of activities and uh, a lot of things that probably will be coming uh, through. Uh, we, why I'm counting down also is. Uh, the 2027 uh, Pamoja bid uh, Africa Cup of Nations. We are waiting okay. to see whether Uganda would. So the year is done and uh, there's no money. There's no money. People, I think maybe you have money, but that is it. And uh, probably uh, the tour uh, for, uh, from here up to Mbali, uh, probably Mbali, uh, Kumi district and uh, Bukedia. Those are some of the tours I had to make. Uh, but of course, interestingly, it was. Now, uh, I just want to confirm that uh, it's very hot everywhere, I think. Uh, <laughs> Only that uh, we had also a blessing of the rain that came through uh, on the way as uh, here. I also found that it rained, so it was a very interesting one. But all in all, uh, big sports uh, stories coming in from uh, the uh, USSA, uh, which of course right now is the biggest. Uh, uh, regionals, uh, uh, regionals will be played according, according to a report on around 14th of April, which uh, of course uh, um, uh, we shall be waiting to see how that would be because uh, West Nile Television already had an interaction with the USA uh, to see that the final uh, for the regionals, West Nile Regional uh, USA Games or the secondary primary games, uh, post primary games will be live. Uh, so for those who are watching wherever you should be, uh, expect that because it's going to be one of the biggest uh, to expect uh, from all angles because uh, teams will need to be. But I today is my first day uh, to take a listen, walk and have a look at what uh, the ball games have been uh, doing, uh, how they have been going on. And out of that, I found that uh, schools are doing good. Uh, most especially Mvara has a good team. Uh, Rua SS have seen them. They have a very good team. But as I talk right now, it is ongoing. And Mvara, by the time I've left, had scored two goals uh, to nil against Rua SS. And it's still the first half, as probably that is uh, getting done. So it is one big game that we shall be talking about. But in the ladies' side, uh, your team, Ediofe. Uh, girls, um, what's your for money? Uh, the other girls <laughs> had to beat Mvara, uh, according to what I had. Yes, which of course I know more will be coming in from our subsequent Nile Caster bulletins uh, that will be right there. I, I, uh, of course, Benson Pastore is uh, coming with that fully and uh, packaged well uh, because he started the game. Of course, the game started when for me I was still for a travel, uh, traveling to Kaba, and uh, that was one big thing. But all in all, the turn up is massive. Um, the turn up is huge. I actually uh, don't know why the, 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 the organizers feared uh, the games to be on Saturday. Uh, one of the reasons, key reasons they had placed across was actually uh, the population. But uh, I think uh, that is one thing that uh, they've all failed to run away from. Uh, mm. Another thing was they thought they would manage the population by concealing off uh, the venue over this place. The whole weekend people were in suspense people were just there mm. people didn't know where these games are going to be but uh, as soon as they mentioned barifa just <laughs> the whole place already was filled so uh, basically to me uh, that is something they also actually failed at it good afternoon mm. a viewer ah uh, we've already kick-started yes now let's start with this uh, of course they uh, have loved the discipline that uh Ediofe girls after winning against vara they left they don't want to be there and they have gone. That shows how organized the teams probably are and uh, good sign of discipline. Um, uh, Idiofe Girls SS has uh, how tremendously been so good right from the start of uh, these very games. Uh, there is uh, uh, the, the, the post primary ball games in Arua City from day one. Uh, I watched Idiofe, um, the, they have been so so good. They, 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 they outplayed every other person mm. at uh, group stages, and uh, I think their, 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 their team composure and uh, the team spirit and, 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 and everything discipline inclusive is actually one thing that has won them the trophy this time around coming through up to finals and emerging of the overall uh, champions uh, Rua City uh, over Vara SS getting uh, a lead there and early goal one goal to zero. I think uh, to me it's quite very impressive and it's quite a very good one. Uh, from uh, the display that Idiofe girls uh, team put across trust me mm. uh, if they proceed to regionals and even nationals uh, Idiofe girls is quite going to push very far unless otherwise. Now what you can say is that uh, Right now, uh, you would say that uh, Idiofe girls, Mvara girls, 
I think, and Muni that have gone through uh, to the regionals. Uh, but for, 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 for the team of um, the boys category, you will see that, uh, yes, the two semifinalists, um, um, Vara and uh, Arua SS, will be representing in the regionals. Yeah, and uh, of course, High, Niva High yeah. is also another team that will be representing. So after the playoffs went on uh, successful for them. But uh, uh, one thing I've seen in the game is that uh, Mvara, uh, in a composed way that uh, they trust in themselves, the team has set up some good team. Uh, whereby uh, the, the, the common name who is nicknamed as Adama, he's the first guy who got a goal in the yeah. first 10 minutes he got that goal. And uh, why he got the goal is because they had a very good combination play. Of course, I've watched, I've said it's my first time watching them. The first time I watched uh, uh, the Manamvara team was when they played the friendly with uh, my team on Duparaka Football Club. But for today, uh, they had a, a very, very consistent uh, flow. Uh, yes, Arua City is trying to play. I mean, Arua, 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 Arua Sessus is trying to play something, uh, trying to bring in the maturity of the game. But Mvara is playing business. They know it is the time that they need to lift this trophy. This was a, uh, let's say it's a reverse of last season uh, because they, were, they beat Mvara in penalties, I remember. They ejected them. They are the defending champions as Arua SS. But this time around, can they redo it? No, of course. Uh, for me, I see they may not overturn the result because Mvara is having lanky defenders. The midfield is very good. They are, uh, the, 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 the player in, uh, that is, uh, uh, of course, in the midfield. The midfield combination is very good. I, I, I couldn't give you all the names of the players there because first time watching them and probably pushing uh, getting all the names would be a very hard one but i've loved it that uh, they are really really pushing uh, the team very far um i believe in the in the in the, in the regionals there will be an outstanding performance uh, from the uh, the either sides because arua ss um uh, the, the team yes the technical team is rich uh, the likes of uh, Kurere, the likes of uh, Omar, the likes of uh, uh, Mohamed Din, the likes of uh, Faiz or Anini. But still, you would see them struggle because they can't give the command that is there. Uh, you look at uh, the, the, the Samson Sizo Kuti and his technical team. They are, of course, on toes. They want delivery. They want that result that is coming in there. And indeed, two goals. Uh, I think it's going to be very big. One. Now, I, lo I have loved the security a bit of it. Uh, UPDF police are all deployed, but what about after uh, the game? Because I've not seen now people even run into the pitch. You run uh, for celebration in the pitch, you are already facing, that is the army, you're facing the, uh, the police and you're facing the patriotic, uh, the patriotic club uh, team that is there. So I believe it's one of its kind, but do we see it end successfully? Because we have seen, uh, most of the time, sometimes it's the OBs, it's those dropouts. For me, I feel those are the people who start chaos. And then the schools, uh, s some of the schools uh, who are there now join, of course, because they have the support uh, that brings in there. That is according to me, because I've been in school and I've known uh, how uh, they behave. Uh, yes, there are those always elements that will be so, 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 so disturbing. Uh, I was listening to uh, one stakeholder in the organization, in the, uh, the, the, the organizers, mm. the person actually uh, said what you said. Uh, most of these girls are not brought in by uh, the continuing students, the current students. For him, he took the stake on OBs, and uh, you've just actually... Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've to, ever been in this school. To drop out, so... Mm. Yeah, there are some people who, of course, dropped up maybe because of, oh, they are suspended. Most of the times, uh, what I can tell you is the trick is, most of the time, some students know now we are going and they may limit number of people going to participate. And they instead get to be, they get to be suspended. And uh, when they are suspended, they go home. And uh, going home, that's now an opportunity because the teacher will not have control over you. The school will not have control over you. But you come and in in initiate such things. So those are some of the things that uh, I believe teachers should also understand. Sometimes suspending just students on such days to limit uh, things is also another. Maybe you wait for all this happen, then you can come and call, refer, uh, because there's a way of delay tactics you can do. Uh, say, let's wait for disciplinary actions. After the disciplinary, of course, that's when you can bring. So it is one big thing that has happened, but uh, the crowd is massive. The crowd is massive, uh, the turn up is real, and uh, we're just now waiting to see what next after the game. I've come out, uh, probably I'll go back and witness if by the time we end the show, we could have uh, uh, maybe won the awarding. But all in all, Susie, 
I think uh, uh, let's look at the teams that will be representing West Nile also or joining the West Nile from Arua City. Do you see progress that will be coming because the different districts are going to send in uh, three, three, uh, probably schools? Um, uh, in the representatives that will uh, uh, that will go in for well, there is a rural city. Uh, trust me, um, Mvaraeses will do us proud. They've been there. They have the experience uh, from uh, the players to the technical team to to to, to the head coach Samson Siso Kuti. So uh, basically, I have trust in uh, there is Mvaraeses. Never high, uh, formerly Nile High. Um, it has been quite a long time before uh, they actually went into to, to regionals to represent. The last time uh, that was last year, it was um, a rural town SS mm. that uh, actually was uh, ejected. All that was beaten for a third playoffs by there is. Niva High that went through to represent, but uh, they were ejected at group stages. So uh, this time around, I think uh, Niva High going through to uh, represent a uh, rural city uh, would equally also have a uh, trust in them. And then we also saw uh, there is uh, the team that is trailing right now in uh, there is uh, the finals to Varaises. There is a, a, a rural a secondary school also did represent last year, but they went quite so far. They represented, and uh, trust me, I think uh, this time around, uh, when they go there, they will uh, definitely do us proud and at least push, uh, even if not to the result of the finals. Okay. Now, that's one of the biggest things that we're looking at. But uh, if you look at uh, where, the fi uh, where the games will be taken, these games are going to be taken to um, Koboko. And uh, that game, uh, it is going to be at St. Charles Luanga uh, Playgrounds. That's where the teams will be doing. And so, uh, we shall be waiting to see what exactly comes through after, of course, a so big uh, moments uh, keep coming from here to there. But all in all, I want to say that uh, the schools that will be getting there, I believe, should be a little bit uh, of uh, uh, should be should be so so big uh, in a way that uh, their movements their numbers that they will be taking there should be limited why i'm saying it should be limited uh, um, uh, we, we really need to push the the, the biggest team uh, in the region to represent the region in that is the national so we are waiting for that and how exactly that will be is uh depending on uh, the two uh the, the teams that will represent uh, so the good football will also do us proud by, by the way we pray this time around that uh, what happened our last season does not repeat itself we saw our schools that actually qualified failing to travel uh, I don't know if you can vividly remember that. And uh, the schools that actually didn't qualify, uh, the likes of Varaises and the rest, were very willing to travel. But then uh, the schools in, uh, there was one school from Germany, and I think also Koboko that were supposed to represent, these were uh, the finalists that made it through to represent, uh, there is uh, uh, our region. But then they failed to travel. I think uh, they put this to financial constraints and all that. So basically this time around, I pray uh, the schools that qualify be able to manage in all other financial uh, issues that come along with traveling and going to represent. Let's wait and see what exactly that will be like because the last time I went to, there was also games that were played I think in uh, Germany where the last season we saw problems here and there. Okay, those are some of the things that are happening and uh, we're expecting a big one that is coming in there. Uh, we shall be waiting to see Susie how the teams will conclude. It's yet to zero. Maybe uh, we should may see the turn of the results. You know, it's a final. And uh, by the way, the second goal came from an OB <laughs> of Arua SS called Adinan. So uh, he went through to haunt his uh, former <laughs> OBs, I think. Yeah, it's, it happens. Uh, of course, you'll always want to deliver. I remember uh, the Adinan guy had issues. They didn't want to release him. And that was one thing I, I, I saw from them. They didn't want to release him. And uh, not until he had to perform. Uh, I don't know what they did, but released later on. And he's now the same guy who has killed them. And uh, probably we will wait to see. But uh, those two, for me, I believe, are, are going to be defending the goals now in second round, uh, second half. Because uh, it is not going to be an easy uh, moment for them uh, to see that they need to move anyhow. The mind of the coach will look into now how do we defend the game and make sure that uh, we, 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 we keep the two goals. So maybe more goals will come in case. Uh, but I would just pray for safety of every other person. Uh, because there are different categories of people who come there. For those who are watching us, uh, maybe through the, uh, the, the, the channels, the, uh, you need to know that uh, this is happening right now. And uh, you need to be safe with your gadgets, phones, 
mm. motorcycles, <laughs> the cars, because we don't know the nature of people who are there. There are different people who have come through uh, for these games, so you should be knowing that it is uh, one big thing. Okay, let's leave that there and uh, get to uh, the story coming in from uh, that is uh, uh, the side here as uh, Mary Numba. Uh, also stars again for that is uh, Le Bon uh, or the Lightnings after she ends the Manchester Thunders unbeaten run right there. She seems to be the lady talked about of late more than Peace Proskovi. Um, uh, talking about Mary Nuba, I think uh, in uh, two or three of the fixtures that actually she has gone into uh, where her team's beat the opponents, she scores 50 plus goals uh, single-handedly. The goals that uh, the other team has scored that to uh, uh, tally up uh, the number of uh, goals that uh, they get. So basically, mm. uh, this I think is quite uh, so good and it's attributed to uh, hard work. It's, yeah, Peace Proskovia started before her and uh, somewhere, somehow, it was Peace's time to shine. Uh, that's why they say every dog has its day. Uh, so basically, I think uh, the hard work that Mary Duba is putting in has uh, has is basically paying off. Uh, the hard work comes through from seeing in the number of goals she single-handedly scores for her team that always beats the opponents. It always uh, tallies up to uh, the number of goals that the opponents have. Exactly. Now, for her, uh, this was a very big one. Remember, this team, Manchester Thunder, had never lost. But for her, she had to do it a record of scoring around 52 <laughs> nets uh, to say that uh, she got this for that is the team. Or 52 goals, she netted that. Really, uh, you would see that uh, this is aggressiveness that she has put into the game uh, to make sure that uh, she really proves to the world that she is that. Mary Numba Chalok, uh, of course a, a Ugandan, but uh, born from uh, Sudan. Recently, Sudan. there was uh, a social media, a rango, where South Sudanese said that we want to own their own. I don't know if that English so is So what there. if <laughs> they want to own their own, what it, does it take? Uh, I don't know. They should follow the, the right to <laughs> Citizenship. <laughs> and uh, if uh, Mary Numba wants to go, yes, it's okay. If she is not, then she's a Ugandan. But that's one big thing that she has done. I'm proud of her. And she's really raising the flag up every time she puts on that uh, Uganda's uh, national team uh, jersey and making sure that things go right there. Yesterday, that was a big league game. Oh, there were big league games uh, in the FUFA, uh, in the Bed Power FUFA Big League. And a couple of games that went on uh, right there. As uh, lately, of course, uh, 2 0 was, uh, I mean, 2 1 was uh, Onduparaka losing to Kataka Football Club, and you did see uh, the team of. Um um, uh, the, the team of uh, Calvary losing to Lugazi also uh, by one goal to nil. Uh, probably I'm talking about now Chigeze homeboys that also beat Chiinda uh, by one goal to nil. It's, yesterday was a home home team affair that of course got the wins right there and this is one big thing that we want to talk about big league is trying to take shape and big league has a lot of issues in the second round um uh, too many issues just especially for uh, the visiting team they always get to face challenges here and there as they go to the uh, home of uh, the team that is hosting. So basically, I think uh, some of uh, the issues are too, too crucial. They are getting to eat up uh, the, 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 the whole beautiful game of football. Uh, it's quite very unfortunate that uh, we thought some of uh, these issues were already resolved, but uh, we see them coming up. We see them repeating themselves. I really don't know how this is going to happen, uh, but then it's quite very unfortunate mm -hmm. that uh, there is a lot of biasness, a poor association still comes up even a uh, mistakes that a layman that does not know football uh, gets to see that this is this but it's ruled out in favor of the other person i really don't know how ugandans are going to come up and fight this uh, but then yesterday to the teams that won genuinely i would say it was quite a very good one it adds up and uh, uh, makes them uh, improve on uh, the positions that they have on the tables and then uh, those that lost <laughs> also out of biasness i would like to say uh, that is that push it to the past and focus on to there is uh, the next game. It was quite a very huge day uh, for there is a bet power. March day 20 went down yesterday and I think the last will be uh, today or tomorrow on March day 20. Yeah, it's a very big one but of course things that happened and uh, uh, yes, a lot of things that probably do happen in the game after of course uh, a very, very challenging game that came through uh, to different uh, teams uh, crying foul for poor officiation <laughs> Uh, from uh, different angles, of course, in away games. And now that's one big thing uh, that people, of course, uh, 
really have to know and understand about Uta football in Uganda uh, because it's one of the biggest thing one will always uh, have to face challenge most especially uh, the FUFA big league because one uh, the, the referees or the official officials are always backed by the Federation of Uganda Football Association uh, which of course has a lot of says uh, depending on uh, who, of course, how it is taken. Um, uh, but all in all, yes, uh, that's football for you in Uganda and football in the big league. And that comes with a lot of uh, questions. Now, of course, uh, you'll be expecting a return, uh, of course, uh, of uh, the fixtures by Saturday. You'll be expecting games coming in there. For Ndupuraka, they'll be welcoming Chigeza homeboys, of course. Uh, that's one big game that you would be expecting uh, to watch in the Western region right there. Now, there's fight and battle uh, for the top slot in the Uganda Premier League also. Away, of course, uh, the Viper Sports Club, Chitara Football Club, and Bull Neck Villa are all in contention for this. And who will be the champion of this? With a couple of games that are probably right there, nine points separates the table leaders, Chitara, from that is the, uh, the Plessed Vipers, uh, with, of course, the champions having only two games, uh, uh, two games, of course, in hand over that is uh, the royals so if they play their two games that means they will have a chance to push maybe if they can win the two that's six points and then they are only a gap of uh, yes already they are ahead because uh, it is uh it is uh it, 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 it is it is one big thing that you see oh, now three from the rest will also be one big one so uh the 11 then play the other game of course you will see that the team is there but where do you see the trophy maybe of the uganda premier league go uh, this time around, it's very tricky, by the way. Last season, uh, we also saw the same. At some point, we thought maybe it would go to Villa, and then uh, somehow uh, we thought bull. bull. And then uh, on the Vipers. last day, it slipped into the hands of uh, Vipers just like that. Uh, so basically, I think to me, this is quite uh, a little bit early uh, to make up decisions and say maybe uh, the table has taken shape, mm. maybe uh, the trophy will go into the hands, or maybe Vipers are going to defend and all that. You've given us the mathematics of so vipers and yeah. there is other royals the chitaras and the point gap and uh vipers having a match return and all that so uh, even if vipers get to win all uh, the two games that they have they will still be a slim uh, gap but uh, that will be of an advantage to them because they would have closed up the already huge gap but i don't think a chitara also just sit down and watch vipers closing up minus uh taking in uh collecting in all the three points in the, the next fixtures that probably could be uh, coming up so basically this time around it's quite going to be a very tight one and it is already a very tight one for uh, there is a uh, the three or four uh top of the table that are fighting to be champions yeah exactly that's going to be a tough one we're seeing neck we're seeing Gitaro, we're seeing bull we're seeing vipers within sports club we're also pushing in there uh so let's wait and see what exactly comes but all in all uh before i wind up the session there was also a very big one uh, that came right there but when we take a break, we'll be coming back. Yeah, we're taking a break. We come, we'll be coming back to give you some few. One of them is uh, where Lango had a very good uh, run over Busoga uh, in the FUFA drum. And uh, we also did see, uh, of course, uh, issues here and there after uh, <laughs> the talking of the, uh, after the game. And uh, my question is, has Lango failed because of the three players they talked <laughs> of? That's the question. Now, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Nile TV, lighting up the region.
on all 52 games live only on Star Times. Star Times brings you Africa's biggest football tournament, AFCON 2023 live in English and Luganda commentary. Starting January 13, don't miss Mo Salah, Sadio Mane or Nana. Lead the hunt for gold as they take center stage. Renew your Star Times subscription today and enjoy all 52 matches in HD live on Sports Premium and Sanyuka Prime. Star Times, the official broadcaster of AFCON 2023. This message is powered by Techno, the official sponsor of AFCON 2023. West Nile TV, lighting up the region. From that break in a post, still waste of time live on West Nile Television. Owen Ezaga and Lady Susie, right here. We have a lot of things uh, that we have packaged and given you up, right? But of course, a few are left probably for us to talk about. And now uh, we say it's a good day, uh, probably wherever you are. Now, of course, Fufa Drum was one big talking point uh, of the weekend. Uh, of course, a game that I watched at uh, Kumi uh, with uh, friends and, of course, uh, other, uh, of course, friends that I got newly. Um, <laughs> a tight game it was, nice game, uh, but Busoga lacked uh, the enthusiasm and, uh, of course, the composer and this belief and self-confidence in them, whereas uh, the Lango did, uh, did everything possible. They applied everything. They knew it was business and won the game. Question is, they relaxed a bit and considered, of course, later on, I think, uh, but have they have, have, have they died have they <laughs> failed to win they were saying they couldn't but the worst moment is that this is the fufa drum that has uh, gotten the least number of fans ever in the history of fufa drum that's where we want to start from um i think what uh, could be the problem the 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 the, the earlier on uh, frustrations that allow uh, fans go out and I think Busoga where uh, they said that uh, Lugogo could only accommodate about uh, 6,000 6, mm. 6, people and uh, they gave out 3,000 tickets for both provinces uh, to me the 6,000 people would only yet even be Lango fans. Trust me, they could do that. These, these people love football, they have the passion, and for the fact that at this time, uh, they already saw and clearly uh, had, had, had trust in them that uh, this time around, the trophy would go to them. Trust me, if they were not frustrated due to uh, the limitations of, of the attendance in Lugogo, that was going to be a very huge turn up from uh, there is a Lango province in there. Basically, no, I think uh, to saw, me, the earlier on frustrations led to uh, a few number of uh, attendants. Okay, a very big one. Of course, that could all be one part, yes. Uh, but all in all, the games were played peacefully. I think that's one big thing. It affects all the it affects federation, it affects Lango, it affects because in this, the federation takes the biggest percentage, and uh, it's so challenging that you have that in your way um, through. But all in all, I want to say um, uh, we, we always have big things to talk about as, uh, um, of course, the drum keeps pushing with a, a lot of, um, a lot of, a lot of, uh, of course, challenges. And when these challenges come in through, you, you, also, you also ask for questions, what exactly that is. But outstanding, anyway. Darius Ujok and um, uh, the man by the names of uh, um, Obua, uh, who got into the goals uh, for the team of Lango, which was one of the biggest things that came through for the two teams right there. So we shall be expecting uh, to see that, uh, because they have ever gone twice, it was first, second, and then the third, it is, uh, first they lost to West Nile, 
in the finals. This is their second time that they attempted to be in the, second, in the final and they won. You would think uh, it, it is a planned thing that every time you get, because West Nile also went to final, final, uh, final, semi final, and eventually, they eventually, won. maybe next time we should see Busoga winning the trophy. Yeah, because they've been into the finals. <laughs> <laughs> But that's a very big one for them. I think a very good uh, congratulations. Uh, my friend, Mr. Abel, uh, the media officer of Valango. Yes, uh, I, I did see you celebrate uh, that trophy. Uh, are you also going to resign like uh, our media officers? Uh, the last time West Nile won, Toko Badr was like he's going to resign. No, he didn't he resign. Back in the next uh, he came back now officially <laughs> as put again. He has resigned. Let's wait to see whether the next edition of uh, the... Uh, uh, there is one key person who has resigned uh, from uh, Adaris Lango. He's called... Uh, there is a... Uh, Geoffrey Odur, uh, who has uh, resigned from being a uh, chairman of uh, Lango province. He says he has uh, too many duties on himself. He's a chief, a clan chief, who is what? So he has basically resigned. And I don't know if we're yet to receive more resignations in there. That's why I'm asking, Mr. Abel. <laughs> <laughs> but all in all, that's one of the biggest things I want to say. Congratulations, Lango uh, province. We're expecting uh, more. Actually, already won. They went to doom forever. Uh, West Nile, yes, tried winning already. Uh, Lango has won. Uh, Buganda has won. Even Buganda that won uh, went also quite. So is it a plan of rotating this trophy? We shall wait and see how it that will be. be. But uh, all in all, it's a very uh, big one. I think the, the, the challenge is there. But to me, Fufa Drum has lost meaning it's and it is losing out, meaning every away. day yeah, so sinking. the previous stand up that used to be is no longer going to be the vibe is not there the vibe is not there everything is not there i did see some media guys saying that they will also not now do publicity about the drama i said okay <laughs> let's see what to do but all in all uh federation needs to come out and outline some of these things and uh, put them rightly so that we see uh, because one time one day we start seeing only 500 people in the pitch i mean in the in the field uh fans to come and watch and see what exactly comes you see west nile when west nile when lango when actually is not in the game don't expect the vibe there it's not there um we have watched some of the drum games where f the, f the stadiums are empty just because they can't uh come in there so it's one big one axel tuan zambe the former ex manchester united has uh, been uh, uh, called and convinced by the sabre who was a former uh, uganda cranes uh coach now he says this player is going to be important into his team of diara congo good one for him um, it's quite a very good one for him and uh, December I think uh, us Ugandans where we didn't where we did have trust issues with him uh, it's quite very unfortunate that uh, he's building up as a team of uh, Congo uh, see him coming through first time and uh, exactly what he attained how far he pushed the, 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 the Congo team and all that so uh, basically I think uh, he's trying to he now knows where the weaknesses are he knows how they were uh, ejected out of the AFCON and uh, he knows their ability and potentials over his team for the shortest time that he has been there. Basically, I think he's trying to uh, bring in uh, a few people to add on to the Congo team to see to it that it becomes so solid and compacted for uh, the next challenges. Yeah, it's a very big one. Now, of course, uh, that's one big thing I wanted to give you an update about. Let's go internationally a bit before we say bye-bye to you. But uh, a few things in the international is that uh, Harry Maguire, Kel Walker, uh, uh, and then, of course, uh, yes, uh, some of the names that have left uh, the team uh, of, uh, of, of England, James Trofford and uh, Rico Lewis, uh, have been called to replace them because of uh, one or two issues. They think uh, they are injured and uh, clubs. Uh, the next game this weekend will be Arsenal playing Man City. So, World Cup missing in that team would be one of the biggest things to, uh, to, 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 to Man City. Um, uh, his injury, uh, I think, uh, has not been... Uh uh, no news, actually, no information has come up on uh, the level of the injury, whether it's putting him out for quite some time or it's going to be a short time and, and all that. So uh, basically, I think uh, this leaves in people in suspense on uh, whether he will be available uh, for the next game or uh, how many games he's going to miss and all that. But then other uh, injuries that Awoka picked in there uh, looked to be something minor, but uh, it's, it's equally also not something, it's, it's quite something big 
something uh, based on uh, some of uh, the, 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 the words that came through from uh, his friends, his colleague players at uh, Manchester City in there. So uh, basically I think in the, name is in the next game that Manchester City uh, will take in there, Walker is going to miss and uh, a few uh, players over there is a Manchester City and trust me it's going to be uh, a very huge blow to there is a Manchester City. The only English uh, Premier League side that I see uh, plays very vividly minus some of the key players and get to win games is uh, there is a Liverpool but uh, the rest of the teams are always affected by uh, the number of uh, injuries that uh, they have in the team. Yeah, true. Uh, but of course now teams are also looking because the summer is coming. Uh, games are soon ending I think around May. Uh, they're looking into how to build up their team and that's why I'm saying the year is ending. Now Arsenal is looking forward to see they want the guy of uh, they want Basel they want they want to be ahead of Barcelona uh, to take Yao Cancelo according to reports are uh, probably that means they are lacking they are looking at uh, some leakage in their defensive ability. Uh, Arsenal uh, this time around I think uh, Arsenal is uh, by the way a very good team they have built up themselves but uh, trust me they still have um, a few issues they still have a few loopholes that they need to tighten up and that's <laughs> why <laughs> I think uh, they're chasing in uh, the, the, the services of uh, there is a Yao uh, Cancelo uh, to see to it that uh, uh, they get to be very solid uh, to uh, compete in very vividly for uh, there is uh, the title race there and uh, if they add him uh, trust me it's going to be quite a very good one for him but uh, this also will uh, depend on uh, the decisions that I uh, will want to make in there to choose uh, Arsenal over Arsenal. Barcelona or okay. choose Barcelona the only over team Arsenal. that you could choose over is uh, if Real Madrid then everyone would choose Madrid uh, over Arsenal but <laughs> right now it is Arsenal is playing good football. You would see them all probably wanting also to play there under Mikel Arteta, who of course is also being linked with the uh, uh, with Barcelona, uh, whom of course Barcelona wants as a head coach. So we shall wait and see what comes. But there's a good news for Bayern Munich. They are custodian number one. Noya is said to be uh, of course a boost for them ahead of the Arsenal encounter. So it is going to be their number one goalkeeper who will be right there. As for Real Madrid are saying they have given a, a deadline, they have already submitted a deadline for Alfonso Davis to make his future, uh, to make a decision about his future because they want him. I remember the man uh, Carvajal could be leaving so they want a player who could represent, uh, I mean replace him. Tottenham Ospers have also uh, submitted a bid for midfielder Cody Gallagher of Chelsea. They want him into their team. Cody Gallagher is he not surplus to requirement at Chelsea really? Um, uh, Chelsea, by the way, Chelsea, Chelsea has a very good squad. Chelsea has very good players. I don't know the problem that a Pochettino could be having uh, together with uh, there is uh, his players because if you look at uh, Teddy Bully and look at a Pochettino and the rest, uh, trust me, uh, Chelsea is a very good team. If only uh, they got someone that uh, knew how to. Uh, put in the players who plays someone who really can understand deeply the strengths and weaknesses of all the players one by one basically i think uh, that is uh, what is killing uh, chelsea for now but then if they also want to do add-ons uh, it could be because uh, they know where the weaknesses are and uh, the add-ons that uh, they are bringing could help them out but i really don't see that working out for them okay three clubs already fighting in for the services over the man by the names of ivan tony west ham arsenal and uh, the team of chelsea where would you prefer him to go? Um, Chelsea, no. <laughs> Maybe you should consider the other two. Arsenal would be my favorite because he would be getting goals. They have midfielders, they have good players at Arsenal Football Club, and that is where Ivan Tony would fit very best. He would score a couple of goals. Uh, you see, Arsenal has no uh, typical clinical striker who gets you those goals. You're seeing Odegaard, you're seeing Saka, who is a winger probably, but of course, a main striker like him would score goals like how Erling Haaland is doing because he has all those. You have Declan Rice, you have, uh, um, you have uh, the man by the names of. Uh, um, um, Saka who can deliver for you, you have Martinelli, you have in that midfield the names of uh, whom am I talking about? This Martin Odegaard, the captain, why don't you get the goals? Uh, you are very, very good side. You have left backs, uh, right backs who can uh, deliver uh, for you. By the way, if you look at Arsenal and all the games they've, they've ever played, I don't know if you've noticed that uh, they actually always don't have a lot of shots on target but uh, they get to win in uh, most of their games and i think uh, if like you had said if he chooses in arsenal uh, being the favorite trust me that's where that uh, the goals would come through and i think uh, maybe 
we can start seeing uh, shots on target for Arsenal at least increasing. But apparently, in the previous games that Arsenal has played, <laughs> they've always had a few shots on target, but they get in to win the games. Okay. Now, Arsenal also to some, they are looking or fighting for a battle for that is Rafinha, who of course was at Barcelona, I remember, and uh, he was at uh, Leeds, I think, at first, then crossed to Barcelona, but he is one name that is being called right there. And uh, they're also fighting for a very big one, 42 million pounds uh, uh, to sign Morgan uh, Gibbs White. Uh, and uh, that's one big thing Arsenal is looking for. United have sent scouts to go and watch one of the players. He's called uh, Mikaili uh, Fahe. Ahead of that is uh, their game at, uh, uh, at, uh, at Barcelona. So waiting to see as Sofian Amra but also decision is yet to be made whether he's going to stay on permanent or no. All those are coming right there. Your parting words. Um, uh, regionally, games actually went down uh, this weekend. Uh, two games, the Rua City Nyahama, they played 2 2, and then uh, Pakwachi Youngsters uh, won their game at 2 uh, 0. That actually puts in now Pakwachi Youngsters on top of the table in Yagaki Zone mm. by a goal difference of one ahead of Apai the Black Angels. Although, uh, by the Black Angels and Pakwachi now, youngsters have played the same number of um, the same number of uh, games. But uh, Pakwachi youngsters, interestingly, also has a game at hand from uh, the game that was uh, postponed Did with the uh, ah, yeah, over yeah, yeah. the hooliganism issues. Yeah, basically that. Okay, uh, that's a very big one. We shall wait and see how exactly that will be.